So since we're doing our engineering unit and our engineering challenge for this unit is the toothpick bridge, I chose to focus our engineering unit on bridges and build bridge building itself. So this next part is going to be looking at types of bridges and forces that act on bridges. Go ahead and get your notes set up and pause the video if you need to and we'll get started. So the first thing you want to think about when engineering is remember that there's a problem to solve. Some sort of problem that needs to be addressed uh, and a possibly a solution for that problem. What kind of situations would we be in or would we need to be in to propose a bridge? Why would we want a bridge um, instead of maybe something else? So if you look here at some of these pictures, you can come up with some ideas, some obvious ones, of um, bodies of water that you need to cross easily and quickly. Um, having boats or ferry boats tend to be a little more um, time consuming, expensive, maybe dangerous. Um, traffic flow in larger cities, often they build um, overpasses and bypasses so that they don't have to have traffic lights. These are both uh, pedestrian walkways, so in safety wise and efficiency for building uh, pedestrian bridges. Um, this here, if you can see that, is a picture of um, the proposed Kinnick Arm Bridge, which would is meant to alleviate uh, traffic congestion coming from the valley into Anchorage. So lots of different reasons. Usually it's um, to get from one place to another over some sort of barrier, water, uh, a road, um, a canyon, whatever the case may be. So in the engineering process, the next step is to look at some of the um, factors that need to be considered when trying to come up with design solutions. So if we know right away that we're going to choose to build a bridge, we want to think about what type of bridge we're going to build. Usually we're focused on, um, we have a budget. And usually we have some sort of specifications that we have to do, uh, just like you have in your project. So some of the factors that you might want to consider when building a bridge are uh, span, how far does it have to go, how high does it have to be, how much money you need to spend, um, what's traveling over the bridge, is it a pedestrian footpath or is it a train bridge, is it going to have a million cars a day or a hundred cars a, cars a day. So you want to make sure that you're including all factors. The other thing um, that is often considered is weather and climate factors. Uh, building a bridge in Arizona is a lot different than building a bridge in Alaska. So you'll want to um, consider those. We don't, saw with the Tacoma Narrows Bridge that wind was a huge factor. So lots of factors. You're not just going to go out and build any old bridge. You want to make sure you're taking into account all the um, environmental and physical properties, uh, or excuse me, <laughs> properties, uh, factors that are going to be affecting the bridge. There are two main types of forces that we're going to look at uh, when building a bridge. There's a couple others that you should have seen or will see in the practice and um, some of the research that you're going to do. But we're going to look right now at two of the forces and that's tension forces and compression forces. So compression is just like what it sounds, it's a squeezing. It's when the, the pieces of the bridge or pieces of the structure get squeezed together. And tension is when they get stretched or pulled. So usually bridges have parts of them that are under con compression and parts that are under tension. So we want to look at some uh, things that can possibly go wrong when you don't take into account the amount of forces that are going to be on them. The first is buckling. So buckling occurs when a, a bridge can't handle compression. So if you're having um, a piece of the bridge where it's being compressed and it buckles or kind of collapses on itself like that, um, that's a, a, that occurs when you can't, it's not handling the compression forces. Snapping. So if something is being tensed, 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 and it snaps, that occurs when it can't uh, hold the tension forces. So when you design and build a bridge, you want to make sure that the forces, that the, the weight that's the lo of the load is being transferred and spread out so that one individual piece of the bridge or member is not taking all the forces so we don't get buckling or snapping occurring. 
So next we're going to go through just a few different types of bridges. I'm going to go over kind of some pros and cons and why you might choose one bridge over another. Maybe um, some situations where these bridges uh, work and work don't work. So the first type of bridge, and we'll start with um, the simplest type of bridge, and that's a beam bridge. This right here is a great example of a beam bridge, very common. You see them a lot. Um, it's the type of bridge that you see maybe as you're driving up to Soldatna over the Kasilov River. Very simple. Um, some of the pros are that it's very simple. It's very inexpensive. Um, it's very low profile. Um, they're strong. They can be low over the water. Um, however, some of the cons are that it's very much limited by the length. If you look here at the way the forces are um, applied to a beam bridge, um, as the load is applied, you get the top of the bridge being compressed in and the bottom of the bit bridge, bri bridge being stretched out. So the longer this beam is and the more load you put on it, you're gonna get more of that stretching, stretching, stretching and could end up with a snap happening. Um, one of the ways that that can be fixed is by adding a truss. So this is basically a beam bridge with a truss on top of it. The truss itself provides uh, some amount of support and allows the force to be um, spread out through the trusses themselves. However, it does add some cost and and some um, stuff in the way. So if you're trying to, you know, keep a view or something like that. So um, it's also low if you need it to be a, a bridge where tall vehicles can travel over. So it's very simple, very um, common type bridge, um, definitely some pros and cons. The next is an arch bridge, uh, probably one of the oldest types of bridges. Very lovely, so one of the pros are that it's a very, very attractive bridge. A lot of people like them um, kind of a dec in a decorative way. Um, they're also extremely strong. Arches are a very, very strong shape. You can see here um, that the when the load is applied to the bridge, the forces are spread out towards the legs of the arch. So as it's pressed this way, the forces are spread out. It makes it a very, very strong shape. The problem with an arch bridge is that it is limited also by its length. You don't tend to see very long arches because with the same reason that you get a beam bridge, if you make this top part of the arch too long, you're gonna end up with some uh, snapping with too much tension forces. Finally, the suspension bridge and the cable stay bridge. Here, the Golden Gate Bridge is a pretty traditional or common example of a suspension bridge. And here, down here is a cable stay bridge. Um, very similar, but for, in a suspension bridge, you get one long cable, and with the cable stay, they're, they're separated um, here and attached to the roadway. So, uh, cable stay and suspension bridges have the benefit of being uh, one of the strongest types of bridges. They're also able to span very, very long distances. Some of the longest bridges that you see are gonna be um, suspension bridges. They're also quite lovely, very um, almost works of art in and of themselves, especially as you see some of the more modern, fancy cable stay bridges. Notice here the way the forces are dissipated through the cables. So as the load's being pulled down on the roadbed, it's being transferred through the cables and into the towers here, these piers, um, which allow for a lot of weight and a very strong bridge. They are very complicated. They take a long time to build and they're expensive, which makes them a, uh, as a, as a con for them. I'm gonna pause. So I'm gonna end with you guys thinking about your toothpick bridges. So as you're making your toothpick bridges, um, what type of bridge is your bridge going to be uh, one of these types of bridge and what how is the how are the forces going to be transferred and dissipated throughout your bridge you're going to want to think about what happens when the weight you know where the weight's going to be on your bridge and how that's going to affect how your bridge supports the weight um, think about how as it it takes the weight on that it's going to spread those forces um, to try to stay up as long as possible so something to think about as you design your bridge.